Senator Mike Johans, a Republican from Nebraska. The amendment now blocks Acorn from receiving millions of federal tax dollars through the transportation and housing legislation. It could, however, still receive money from other federal sources. Senator John's office says Acorn has already received $83 million in federal funds since 1994. Friday, the U.S. Census Bureau terminated its agreement with ACORN to participate in the 2010 census. By the way, the funding for ACORN, 40% of it coming from taxpayer dollars. The funding amendment comes as new accusations against ACORN continue to surface. ACORN staffers in a third office have been caught on tape, apparently giving advice to a pair of undercover filmmakers who were posing as a pimp and a prostitute. The ACORN workers are on tape telling the two how to evade the law. This latest ACORN scandal surfacing last week when similar videos made in ACORN's Baltimore and Washington, D.C. offices were released online. Our Abby Boudreaux has the report. The three videos show ACORN workers apparently offering help and advice to a couple posing as a pimp and a prostitute. ACORN spokesman calls it a right-wing setup. It's a sham, is what it is. It's an orchestrated sham. It's journalism by Borak. That they're attempting to create news rather than report the news and are doing so in a deceiving, not genuine way. And trying to trick people who are trying to help people. So far, Acorn has fired four of the workers from the videos and has started a nationwide review of its local offices. Yet it questions the motivation of the filmmakers, and it suggests the tapes were doctored, though it's not been able to produce any evidence to back that claim. We've been demanding the raw footage, the unedited tape, the undoctored tape, to really try and figure out what was really going on. In the latest undercover video from Brooklyn, New York, filmmaker James O'Keefe and his colleague Hannah Giles walk into an Acorn office looking for help setting up a fictitious brothel using underage girls trafficked in from El Salvador. Rather than call the police, a staff member advises the couple to hide their illicit income in a tin can. You get a tin and you bury it down in, in there and you put it money right in there. Over it and, put it, and you tell a single soul but yourself where it is. Wait, I, a, a tin, I put the money in a in tin? In a tin and push it in there, there. And put it in the grass over and put, and put the grass over. In an earlier video, D.C. workers advised the pimp about how to get his money and protect his good name after he tells them he intends to run for Congress someday. What you're going to have to do is say that you're getting a gift from somebody. Okay. Okay, but the money got to go in the bank. And Baltimore weighed in on how to hide the fact that the brothel was going to be staffed by young girls brought in illegally from El Salvador. When the girls come, they're really not going to be employees because you're, you're not going to issue them W-2s at the end of the year. I don't they're know. under 16, yeah. so you don't worry about that. But on the, the other part of the, of, of the return, you can use them as a dependent. So, okay. You can use them as a dependent because they live in your house, especially if they're under 16. We tried to contact all of the workers in the three cities without success. Lou, we have calls into the FBI since we're now talking not only about two states in the district, but also about international sex trafficking. We also have a call into the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, which authorizes ACORN uh, staff to give housing advice about whether it intends to investigate these incidents, but we're still waiting to hear back. Lou. Uh, Abby, what is Acorn saying beyond uh, you know, the, the idea that the, the, these were not uh, nice people deceiving them, uh, uh, these filmmakers? I mean, how are they, how are they rationalizing what we're watching uh, here on uh, video? Well, one of the big questions that we wanted to know are like, what are the qualifications? You know, what is the kind of training that these employees are getting, uh, you know, before they're giving advice like this? Because it just doesn't make any sense. But uh, they just don't seem to have an answer for us right now. I mean, they really stayed on point uh, with what they wanted to tell us and what they wanted to communicate to us. So, of course, these are questions that we, we need answered. People want these answers. Lou? I mean, if I could, I'd like to ask you to just stand by for a moment. Uh, I, I, we've been reporting here for some time on the investigation into ACORN's voter registration policies. 
And on this very broadcast in April, Acorn's uh, chief organizer and CEO, Bertha Lewis, was in complete denial about uh, our reporting of those widespread investigations. What do you suppose would be said about Acorn? You're being under investigated in 13 states for crying out oh, loud. Oh, well, I'm glad you, you know, brought that up. Well, That's no, not no, true. No, it, it may... Check the facts. It's not true. You can get on the phone right now. Call the Department of Justice. I didn't you say anything about any... the Justice Department. Acorn is not being investigated anywhere in any state. You don't have your facts correct. Well, as it turns out, our facts are correct. Uh, Acorn and its workers are being investigated in at least 10 states. Uh, and by the way, that discussion started with, uh, uh, of course, Sheriff Joe Arpaio in Maricopa County, including, by the way, the Acorn charges against 11 former Acorn workers filed just last week in the state of Florida. Now, I'll have a few thoughts on Acorn and all the day's issues on the radio, Monday through Fridays on the Lou Dobbs Show. But I want to go to, uh, if I may, uh, back to Abby Bedreau. Uh, and there, you, you hear Bertha Lewis saying, no way. I mean, she's, I don't know if she's in complete denial or if whether she's just denying completely as a matter of tactics. Uh, what, is, what is the sense from the leadership of ACORN here? Well, I mean, it's the same thing that we're seeing in this story. When Last week when we first reported this story, when we talked to the spokesperson, Scott Levinson, uh, about this, you know, he said that this, this wasn't happening. He said this ha that these tapes, this filmmaker went to, you know, a few different cities and this wasn't happening in those cities. That, in fact, you know, they were reporting it to police. But that's not what we're finding. We're seeing tape after tape coming out um, with the same story, the same kind of setup and the, and the same kinds of answers that these employees are giving. So, I mean, this is something, of course, a Corn says that they're looking into. Um, I, I don't know. I think a lot of people. Well, I know we talked to Congressman Steve King of Iowa last week, and he right. is outraged about this, saying that you know he feels that there should be a congressional um, investigation yeah. uh, into this. And I think there are more people that will be stepping up, saying similar things. Yeah, it, it's it's extraordinary that uh, that there hasn't been more of a call on on Capitol Hill. Uh, for uh, an investigation, but obviously with this amendment just put through by Senator Johns, that has begun. Uh, we'll see where it leads. Abby, thank you very much. Nice reporting. Up next here, our continuing series.